Hi guys, Mark here, how you doing? Um, I just wanted to pick up today a little bit about um, white balance. I've had a few people ask me um, if I can just quickly explain my understanding of white balance and so um, here goes. Colour is light and light is temperature. Okay, so everything is relative to specific colour temperatures and that dictates how we see that colour temperature and interpret it as a colour. Okay, um, now us humans, we're quite smart objects. Um, we can look at the color white and we recognize the color white and we see that under different lighting options. Um, but because we are programmed to, to be able to interpret that, um, we interpret that as white and we're, we're able to do so because of, our, because of our brains and our visual understanding of, of what color and temperature and everything else is. Cameras can't do that. They're not as smart as we are. It's a machine. It's a mechanical shutter. Um, so we have to find a way in order for a, a photograph to not require so much editing. We have to find a way to be able to tell a camera that, OK, this is the color spectrum that I want you to recognize white from. OK, uh, and we can do that with a number of settings that we've got on the camera that relate to white balance. Funnily enough, if you look at all of the um, default settings, they're all set within in regards to a specific temperature that's marked with the letter K, okay? And that K signifies Kelvin, which in itself is a system of temperature measurement, okay? You have Celsius, you've got Fahrenheit, and you have Kelvin. The difference between Kelvin, Fahrenheit, and Celsius is that while Celsius and Fahrenheit both have the option for negative numbers, as in minus degrees Celsius and minus degrees Fahrenheit. Um, Kelvin doesn't have that. Everything stops at absolute zero. Zero Kelvin is equivalent to zero molecular activity. It's Everything's still. That's it. There is no minus zero in the Kelvin temperature range. On the Canon cameras, I'm not sure about Nikon, Nikon, Nikon or Nikon? Okay, in the comments, Nikon or Nikon? N-E-Y-E, -E, con for nigh, as in I, and Nikon spelt normally. Go. Um, anyway, the Canon goes between uh, 2,500 Kelvin, and you can dial it all the way up to 10,000 Kelvin. Now, bearing in mind that if zero is freezing or it, or on the temperature scale, if you were to portray the Kelvin range of temperature that you have at your access in the camera it's going to go from cold to hot if you see what i mean um, with the colder temperatures being blue blue normally means cold red normally means hot okay so if you had a an animated slider pretty much like this one here you'll see that when we start off on the left and we go to the right from 0 to 10,000, you'll see that it starts off cold and it becomes hot. So on that sliding scale, as you get towards uh, you know, different temperatures that are outlined here, you'll see that there's a correlation of that temperature with the colour offset for that particular white balance temperature. Get my drift? Okay, so when you want to come to take a photograph, um, you normally set your shutter speed, your aperture, your ISO and uh, so on and so forth but you also set your um, white balance and your your white balance is you've got a range of defaults that you can choose from hold on just put my allowances on um, and the way that you access those on the back with the canon is by using the selection button that you find here in the middle and that then takes you into the area where you can select your kelvin characteristic okay um, and then you can go through and what you'll notice with each setting apart from white uh, auto white balance um, is that each different scenario like this one now with the daylight with the sunshine it correlates to and it tells you here with a Kelvin equivalent temperature of 5200 if I go in again and go to the shade setting it says approximately 7000 Kelvin um, cloudy approximately 6000 Kelvin, tungsten light 3200, uh, white fluorescent light 4000, you can set it to flash, 
you can set a custom white balance which is also very um, handy especially and believe it or not some people do shoot using um, uh, welding glass as long duration uh, as for, for super long exposures now the problem with using welding glass is that normally welding glass has got a tint to it whether blue or green um, now when you shoot with an extra super long shutter of like four eight whatever however many minutes that um, cast becomes quite overbearing one way around it and it's quite lengthy because it means having to take two photographs is that once you've taken your photograph using um, using filtered glass for example um, you then use that image as your custom white balance reference image which means you're telling the camera <coughs> to recognize the color spectrum of that color cast to base itself on white okay and so what you do then you take another photograph edit with all it, the exact same parameters and what you'll find is that the color cast is pretty much gone you may just have a little bit of residual left on it um, but um, it's going to mean a lot less um, a lot less editing uh, in in your final image when you get your image into the computer okay so that's one way of getting around it and that's a very good tip for um, custom white balance setting um, but the final setting that you've got Kelvin itself yeah uh, and what I can do by then using the the main scrolling control bar at the top is that I can set the Kelvin temperature to temperature to be exactly how I want to have it and this is particularly attractive to us as shooters at night time and I'm going to explain exactly why but we're going to head out on location and I'm going to do it from there so we're at this really nice uh, crossroads um, we're in the middle of uh, Yokohama and we've got this really nice area with uh, we've got a crossroads with uh, one two three five joining roads um, but it's just nice because uh, you've got roads you've got cars you've got trains you've got office blocks the only thing we don't have which would be really awesome is um, uh, clouds nice clear sky it would be okay if I was up by Fuji but I'm not I'm down here um, but anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a succession of five or six shots. Um, the first shot is going to be a shot taken at regular daylight setting, which is equivalent to 52, um, 5200 Kelvin. Um, just to show you how orange um, the, the machine will see uh, the ambient light, which is now being cast by halogen street lights. Okay, and they are, it's a very warm gas, a very warm light. Um, so it's gonna, you're going to have a very overbearing tinge of orange and that's exactly why we use the manipulation of the um, manual Kelvin so that we can override that on a, a, during a nighttime shoot uh, um, in the urban environment. Okay? Um, so my first shot's going to be just on regular daylight setting and then from there what I'm going to do, I'm going to go into my Kelvin selector and I'm going to come down at increments of 500 Kelvin for each subsequent shot okay so we're going to have one shot at 5200 we're going to have another shot at 4700 4200 37 32 and what i might even do then is go to 27 as well okay just to show you that complete um, shift in color um, with regards to the uh, kelvin range bearing in mind that we can only go to a minimum of 2500 on the kelvin with this particular camera um, but it's going to be more than enough to show you and to explain uh, visually that shift in, in temperature. Okay, so let's go ahead and take our first shot. And that was on daylight Kelvin of 5200. Um, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go in and I'm going to go into my Kelvin setting. Um, the one we've just taken was on 5200 so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go let's say we'll come off of there by 500 Kelvin and we'll go to 4700 okay so I'm going to take another shot that's now taking a second shot okay and second shot again uh, you can see it's still a little bit orange um, Okay, so that was the second shot. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the third shot and um, we were on 4,700. So what I'm going to do on this one, I'm going to come back down. I'm going to come down to, uh, what did we say, 4, 500 at a time. Okay, so now we're on 
4,200. Okay, and I'm going to come down just a little bit on the shutter to a 15 second shutter. Okay, and we're going to take that shot. We've got a two second delay. So we're on a 15 second shutter now. And it, it's so cool because all, all of the cars now are coming head on. And, and I'll show you a trick with the editing a, a little bit later on. Um, just to oh, just to show you how we can get a nice little effect with the edit. Okay, well we're starting to get a little bit closer to the aesthetic that I want. Let's come back down now um, into the Kelvin. This is our fourth shot. Two second shutter, two second delay. It's cool, we've got some trains coming by. Coming by, coming by. Okay, and so now I'm going to come all the way down to, what did we say, we're on 3700 now. Okay, so I'm going to go to 3200. And now we should start getting very much into the realm of very little influence from the, um, the warm glow of the halogen bearing in mind that halogen is a very warm gas and uh, it really affects urban imaging big time. So, where are we? Yeah, much better, much better, much better. Now, don't forget, there is going to be some red and orange in the, in the light glow because we've got the red lights from the traffic light and there are on this particular intersection, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight red lights. So you're going to have a certain amount of red light. I'm going to come and dial it down just at one more time, see how much we can get away with. What did I say? 27. This should be blue as blue can be. Okay, this now is going to be the last shot. This will be the last shot of the series. And I'm hoping that everything comes out hunky-dory with this shot. But after this, I'm gonna we'll head back and we'll get into the editing and I'll show you. Oh yeah, much better. I'll show you a few tricks with regards to editing, how we can take these shots, put them all together, and make them look absolutely mind-blowing. Okay. Let's go and do that. Hi guys, well I'm back at the uh, back at the um, spare bedroom, the office. <laughs> um, had a great shoot. Um, what I'm, although this isn't really a supposed to be an editing um, tutorial. What I'm quickly going to do is just show you how you can go about creating a nice um, final image from the images that we shot today. So without further ado, let's just open up Photoshop. And what you can see here, I've already opened these images, I've already resized them. I've resized this to 1200 by 800. And um, what I'm going to do is I've got each one of the images open. You can see that up here. Okay each one of the images open but I've got also this blank empty one here so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take each one of the images now this is the first image it doesn't matter which order you do it because you, you'll see what I'm going to do um, this is the first image we took so this is the one that was at 5200 Kelvin okay what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, command all command copy I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste that onto this new file there okay we're done with that first image okay now over here on the image you have your blending roll okay now this first image is going to stay because it's the base one but you'll see what I'm going to do with the next image I'm going to take the next image which is this one here and I'm going to do the same I'm going to copy that and I'm going to go then to my pasted first image I'm going to paste that on top 
there you go now watch what I do here using this second layer um, I'm going to change the blending mode to lighten and you'll see what happens boom everything that everything that is lighter in the subsequent frame will overlay on the base of the first frame okay so you can see here the ghosting images of the cars that were on that second image so if I now go to um, my third image there's my third image and I'll do the same again let's uh, copy all copy go to the pile paste it onto the top there and you'll see that that overlays everything so you can't see what's underneath it until you set the blending mode to lighten there you go and there's the added options that are coming from that third image and so on and so forth okay let's do our fourth image now, I don't know about you but this little image here the image with the cars is for me it's I find it a bit off-putting off okay and what you can do is you can by doing the visibility of each layer you can see what you think works better or worse just up here on the little eyeball icon in Photoshop I actually prefer it without those cars yeah I don't think there's, there there's any additional benefit to the image by having those cars there so I'm gonna get rid of this layer okay and there we go that's the, the master layered image now what we can do if you look down here um, to, 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 to do if this was the, the real sized image this would be a huge file this would be around you know, five or six gigabyte okay so, um, bearing in mind that each one of these files is 300 megabytes uh, full resolution from the Canon um, 5DS R um, so what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to merge all of these merge visible okay so we've just got one layer it's locked what I'm then going to do is I'm going to save that onto my computer and I'm then going to reintroduce it to Lightroom to do all of my edit my to get it ready for presentation I'm not going to go into that now because it's, that could be a bit uh, long-winded um, there will be editing um, tutorials in the future but for now I'm going to leave you with the final image of the night all accomplished with by by manipulating the Kelvin white balance I hope uh, you've uh, learned something on this tutorial and, and if you have please do feel free to uh, subscribe and uh, catch you soon. Cheers guys.